Hi everyone, this is David Luong. I'm a senior cinematic 2 artist over at Blizzard Entertainment, and this video is going to cover me using Lightroom, my workflow for editing photos, and me using my dog Xena as the model. There are a number of things I want to go over in Lightroom, especially some of the GPU features that are accelerated, and also the newly enhanced details that are RTX accelerated for the new NVIDIA cards. Currently, I've got my default Lightroom catalog. Um, let's go ahead and create a new one for um, this photo shoot. So I'm going to go over here and go to File, New Catalog. Let's just put it into the default pictures area here. Let's usually go with um, the year and the month, and then the day, followed by a description of the photo shoot. This one's going to be Xena Holiday Photo Shoot. And then say Create. So now that I've got my new um, catalog just for this photo shoot, I can go ahead and import in my files. Um, so go into the import dialog button here. Say import, find where your files are. I put mine into my SSD drive here in the raw. So I've got a bunch of photos that I've shot up in Big Bear with Xena, my dog. Make sure everything's selected. You got all the check marks selected. Check all. Sometimes you can do uncheck all and just select the ones that you want. But I'm going to check all for this one. Over here, I'm going to build the 101 previews. Um, usually it's set to standard, but if you have a fast computer or you don't mind waiting for a bit more, um, do the one to one because when you zoom into each photo, there's no lag. So I'm going to build it now, take the hit early on, and then not have to um, lose the interactivity when I edit my photos there. I don't really need to build smart previews. Um, that's usually when I don't have my raw files with me, but I usually have always, I always have my raw files with me. So um, don't import suspected duplicates, that's fine. I'm gonna make another copy, don't need that. I'm not gonna rename my photos. Don't need any developed settings for now. What I usually do is import in all my photos into a subfolder. So under the catalog folder here that I just created earlier, I'm gonna name this file raw or this folder raw put all of my raw files organized into one folder. So when I hit import now, it's going to all copy everything um, as a DNG from my Sony camera, which is a ARW file. It's its own proprietary raw format, but you want to convert it to DNG because it's a lot more uh, open source and it's, it's more standardized across all other um, software. So that's a lot easier to use across platforms. So I'm going to import here. So it's copying everything and importing it in. And then what it'll do after that, it'll start creating, <clears throat> it'll convert everything to DNGs. And then after that's done, it's gonna start creating the one-to-one -one, uh, thumbnail. All right, now it's gonna build one-to-one -one previews here. So it'll be a lot more fast interactively when I go around, zoom in and out of my photos when I edit. All right, now that that's done, um, now we can start editing. So Lightroom is pretty CPU intensive, um, CPU intensive, and now GPU uh, accelerated as well as RTX accelerated. So be sure to have a fast CPU, um, have a recommended uh, RTX GPU card from NVIDIA, which uh, accelerates a lot of things, and also a fast um, storage drive space. Right now I've got all my raw files and my catalog on an SSD NVMe. So the transfer speeds are really fast um, for reading and writing all my photos. I shoot on a Sony A7R, and so they're pretty much 8K files, 8K RAW files, each photo. Each of them are about 35 megs um, in the RAW format. So going through all these, I've got 102 photos, I believe. Yeah, so 103, actually. Um, no, 101, 102. So I'm going to go through now first and find the ones that are clearly terrible, like out of focus or just way overexposed or way underexposed and uh, reject those. So by rejecting them, I can delete them from my drive and not even worry about them or not even have them in the catalog. So it'll take less space and just speed up my editing overall. 
So you want to go around the photos and kind of um, reject them, and you reject them by pressing X. And if you unreject them, you can see, or sorry, if you look at the rejected ones, you can see how it's all grayed out. And if you made a mistake and you wanted to unreject them, you can press the tilde sign, which puts it at pick first, and one more time to have it as normal. Also, after you reject one, you can also click on this icon, then it'll be back to normal as well too. So now I'm going to kind of inspect each one. Using the mouse scroll, you can go from the next photo back and forth. Just kind of picking the ones that I don't think that would be working well in this photo edit. Sometimes this is like a duplicate. It's a little too close to the other one. Um, I kind of like the closer up one better. So let's set that as rejected. See so yeah, how this is just a head turn, a little bit close. And this one is a clear duplicate. Zoom up to inspect it. Both have pretty good quality. It's just a matter which one I like more. I'm going to go with this one. So reject this one. Also that one, it's too close to the other one. Looking away, do you want that one? I feel those are pretty close as portraits. I'm going to reject this one. This one is also very similar. This one's a better rim light from the sun. Uh, let's go with this one. I'm going to reject that one. Also very close, these two. I feel like this one, she's kind of sloshing her head a little bit too much. So I'm going to keep this one. Let's double check the quality. Zoom in. Always keep the eyes in focus. So that one's okay. I'm going to reject that one. Again, looking away, not so useful. Reject. This one's a little bit blurry, so I may reject that one. I'm going to think about that one. This one crops out her ear. don't really like that, so I'm going to reject that. Another one that's too side profile. Let's reject that one. So this leash here is probably too much in the way. Reject that. Reject that one too. That one's not too bad. I feel like this one's more successful because it's got the eye light looking at the sun. So I'm going to reject that one. That one's too far off. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Too much of a side look here. Reject. Very calm stance. Looking way too much. Reject. Too dark. Reject. That one's okay. Or this one. Let's compare both. Eyes are good. That's also okay. This one's better composition. Let's reject that one. Reject. Two very similar ones for the little teddy bear. And let's reject that one. Big Bear Lake. This one's a lot more clear than this one, so reject that one. Oh, very similar again. Reject this one. Keep this. 
This one looks like she hates the bear, so let's reject that one. <laughs> She's got her hat here. Again, focus is good. Um, let's reject this one. Too low, reject. Let's see. This one's probably out of focus. Yep, reject. Let's check this one. Not too bad. Could be better. Too low, reject. This one, she's like afraid of this fox stuffed animal. Reject. That one's good. Let's reject this one. This one's like, she doesn't like it. Oh, that one's kind of cute. Let's reject that. Reject. Maybe. Reject. Reject. Reject that. Oh, that one's not too bad. Reject that one. Reject. That's kind of cute. Hmm. It's like a long dog here. Let's reject that one. Too long. Reject. Angry face. Oh, that one's good. Let's reject this one. Reject. Reject. Uh, nope. Reject. Hmm. Very close. Let's kill this one. This one or this one? She looks like a predator, this one. Let's let's reject that one. Keep this one. Oh, let's double check. Focus compared to this one. Yeah, that one's okay. Let's reject that. Reject. A big snout. Hmm. Let's check focus. Reject that one. I'm going to keep that one, the most cute one. Reject, reject. A little solitary here. Let's keep that one. Or that one. Hmm. That one's also good. Let's reject that one. Keep this. Reject, reject, reject. Okay, let's go back to our library. Let's do a quick overview of everything to make sure that the ones we rejected are the ones that we really wanted to reject. Ah, there's a couple here that I do want to review. Let's keep that one. That one's cute too. Box-like. Uh, let's reject that one. Reject. Regal. Good. Reject. I like the ones on the third side. It's better. It's probably too low. Reject. Too many ducks. Hmm. Let's think about that one. Looks like she's itchy here. Reject. Oh, branches in the way. I like her when she's looking more on the side. That's between this one, this one. Let's reject that one. Okay. Cool. So we can change this filters off. Go to rated. And then hit the rating one. Sorry, rejected. Hmm. Okay, so now that we have all the rejected photos, what we want to do, go up here to Photo, and go to Delete Rejected Photos, or you can press Control Backspace. Let's do Delete this. Um, it says Delete 65 Rejected Master Photos. I've already got it backed up on my other drive, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete it in this catalog. 
um, so it doesn't blow up this catalog. So delete from disk as well. That's going to remove all of them. So we've got just the raw photos that we really want to edit. So I've got 37 photos here that I want to go back in and edit. I want to balance all the exposures, the, the colors, um, get it all looking correct compositionally, crop-wise. Um, so let's go from there. Um, usually I can also go in and press uh, star, like pressing the one key that I really, really want to keep. Um, sometimes elevated to two, but usually I do one that I really want to keep. And then the ones that I don't put as a star, um, that means that I just want to keep the photo on my catalog, but I'm not really going to develop them. So now I'm going to go through again, second round to put in some stars. So let's press zero on these first and go back in and figure this out. Let's see. I think I'll keep that one. Let's keep that. Uh, decide not to keep that one, so I'm going to leave that out. It's a little too short here, so I'm going to go keep this one with the ducks. Very regal here. I love that one. Hmm. We'll think about that one. So I'm gonna leave that for now. I like her smelling things. It's like a hunter dog here. Hunter dog, close up of hunter dog. Love those. So we got two similar ones, this one and this one. Hmm. Slightly different angle, but I I guess I'll let me keep those two. This one's probably too similar to the other one, so I'm gonna leave that one out. Love that one. That one, she's looking away too much, I think. Keep this one. Looking down, maybe too low. These two are very similar. Hmm. Let's check focus. The blurry. This one nailed it, so I'm gonna keep that one. Love this one with the depth of field. Got a little dirt here we can remove later on. Let's keep that one. Love the Big Bear Lake. She's so embarrassed here. Look at that. Let's keep that one. Keep that one. Fox in the Wild. Love those. Um, think about that one. Let's check out the focus. A little bit blurry. It's always nice to see her sniffing things. Hmm. I'll think about that one. Let's keep that one. Uh, a little dark. Let's keep this one. Her face there. Keep that in the wild. All right. So now I'm gonna go up to filters off. Change it to rated and have it on rated one. So now I'm down to 26 photos. So 102 photos down to 26. Editing is just, you know, getting rid of shots that you really don't need. And I think these should be fine for her photo shoot. All right, so let's go in here. I'm gonna do a quick Development, actually I'm gonna go and develop first all the way. So the color profile you have starting out is always Adobe Color, but you can always change it to something else. So you can click on the grid there and you can see different kinds of presets that Lightroom has. Some people sell their own presets and you can buy them online, um, but I just usually just like use one of these from Lightroom or I could just develop it um, from scratch in Lightroom too. Some of these are just kind of whatever. But some of them have a pretty cool feel. Like this one looks almost like a shot in the 80s, like the film quality of it. That one's a little too drastic. Not doing black and white. Got the modern here. That one's decent. Vintage look. I feel like that 
other one was pretty cool. Slightly 80s look. It's got the contrasting tones of orange and blue. So I think I'm going to go with that one. Just want to keep in mind um, if it's sunny or cloudy, what time of day it was. Uh, most of these photos that I shot was slightly overcast. Um, the sun isn't really peeking out much. So they should all match pretty well in the end. After I change one photo, then I'm going to match all other photos to this one. Let's go back to the Develop tab here. And let's start with the exposure. So it's pretty underexposed. I'm going to brighten that up just a little bit. It's pretty blown out now. I'm going to bring the highlights down, save some of that space. I do feel it's a little bit too saturated. So first, let's play with this slightly cooler tone. Then I'm changing the vibrance here. Let's do it right there. Saturation slightly down to about there. Shadows can go up just a little bit. Let's bring back some of those highlights. That's pretty good. It's enhanced. Not bad. It's not too noisy. Let's play some gradients. So this is also pretty GPU accelerated too. So it goes in pretty quick. You can move it around. I always try to keep the focus around the center. Let's undo that one actually. I'll make it too dark on this side. Let's turn that off. I'm not going to play with that one. Let's do split toning. Give the highlights a slightly different color. And you can give the shadows a little bit different color here too. So we got a slight blue here, and then we got a slight warmer color for the highlights. I think I don't need the detail setting there. I'm gonna do a slight post crop vignette. Let's go back to library here. Let's double check the quality. And to even make it better, what you can do, this is new RTX feature from NVIDIA uh, that really speeds up um, enhanced details. Before, enhanced details really used your CPU in conjunction with the GPU, but now it uses the tensor cores on the RTX cards to speed it up even more. So I'm gonna right click, go to enhanced details here, and it brings up this dialog box. Use machine learning to improve details and artifacts, reduces artifacts. So you can move around where it can affect the most. Let's zoom out. Let's zoom in here. To our eyeballs, let's see, enhanced here, click, without enhance, enhanced. So it's pretty subtle, but it really kind of enhances out some of the qualities of the colors. And sometimes, especially for hair, um, it makes some of the hair a lot more smooth. Compared to the original raw file. So let's go ahead and enhance that. And see how fast it enhances right there. Um, usually it's a lot slower without the RTX cards. So what it does is it creates two files. One is original here, 
One is the enhanced one. Let's color code the enhanced one to yellow. And you can see between the two. If I do a compare, let's look at both at the same time. There's some subtle differences. I'm going even closer. So original ones on the left, enhanced ones on the right. Zoom up on this here. Some subtle differences. But just keep that in mind. It's another tool set for a photographer. Um, you can enhance details if you want, um, especially for files that are like pretty low res. Um, my files start out as 8K already, so. It's pretty high res as well. So you might not need as much, but go ahead and try it out on your photos. Uh, it might make a difference. So I'm gonna turn off this compare. Let's take a look at this enhanced version. Um, let's see what else I can do here. Play with the contrast just a little bit. And then bring up again the shadows just a little bit more. Right there. I do like to play with a little bit more vignetting. And maybe just a little bit more this way. Bring up this just a little bit more. Cool. I think I like that. So I'm going to use this photo here as a starting point for all of the photos. Let's go back to library, double click out. Let's take this enhanced one, right click, go to develop settings and copy settings. So let's see, mostly I need the treatment and profile, the white balance, what I edited. Uh, let's do basic tone for now, even though we know a lot of the other ones are going to be different tones and exposures, but that'd be a good starting point. Keep color as well, split toning, local adjustments like gradient, uh, gradients and filters, I'm going to do that manually. Uh, I'm not going to do the post vignette vignette. I'm going to do that manually as well. None of these I don't need. So let's see. Copy that. Let's go in here. I'm going to paste it all into all of these here. I shot this all within about an hour of hour, an hour and a half of all the photos. So time of day is pretty good. So I don't have to worry too much about time of day differences. Let's right click, develop settings. Do paste settings. It's going to go in here and add everything in. And everything's pretty overexposed right now, so I know that. So just all you have to do is go to exposure here, expose everything back down. Uh, let's do one more. All right, that'd be a good starting point. This and this, let's go back into develop. I'm going to do the reference view here. So what you can do is you take your main photo, drag it in there. There we go. And then you're going to take your other one that you want to edit this way. So you see it's pretty underexposed. Let's bring her up. Bring the whites down, highlights. 
vibrance just a little bit more here. Play with the vignette. Let's do some graduated filters. That may be too much there. Let's quick that off. Expose it up just a little bit more. Bring the highlights a bit more here. More shadows. Cool, let's keep that one. Next one. Similar thing. Bring that up. Vibrance. This one's a little more saturated. So let's go back. Add some of the vibrance back in. Let's compare this back also a little bit more. There we go. Okay, this one. Let's bring that up here, vignette. A little more vibrance. And you can also use the plus and minus keys to give it a little, just 10% exposure boost. I think that one would work. Let's go and try this one. Cool. Let's see here. I think we've got a wide shot here. Um, I got a close up shot here, but we can go probably even closer. So I'm going to press R, go into crop mode. Let's go back here. Press R. Make sure you have the lock on if you want to keep the same aspect ratio. Let's see how close we can go. Feeling like this would be a good candidate for also enhanced details. But before we do that, let's bring up the exposure. Bring down the highlights, bring down the whites. Get some vignetting in there. Darken down this right side. That may be too much. Let's go back to reference view.
maybe a little too desaturated. Let's bring that back. Cool. I'm going to right click this, do enhance details. See how this looks. Just smoothing out some of the noise. Let's go ahead and enhance that. Make sure to color code to enhance the photos. Go back to this gradient, it's maybe too dark. All right, let's keep that one. On to the next one. I kind of like the light glare from the sun over there. Gives a nice little effect, atmospheric effect. Let's keep that one there. Not an underexposed one. Let's bring her up. A bit of vignetting. Just slight darkening over here, maybe too much. All right, let's keep that. Bring up the exposure. Bring in the spikes. So most of this is just um, doing exposures and vignettes, um, sometimes croppings. You try to set up your shot in the camera as much as possible so that when you go into post, you don't have to do too much. Let's do that one there. I'm gonna play around with how this might look if I zoomed up a little bit more. Yeah, I like that better. Let's go back to this. Maybe a little bit too saturated here. Or we are in a different area, so you can justify that. Let's really draw the eyes with gradients and darkenings.
cool. Um, this is probably too high here. I'm gonna go down just a little bit. Get that composition there. Yeah, let's keep that one. Very similar pose. It's a little bit more color. There we go. So close. Yeah, I'm going to take these settings because they're so close to each other. Copy all that and paste it over here. Yeah, that works. A gradient here, a gradient there. Let's vignette this slightly. Look at this almost same pose, wow. Zoom in just a little bit more here. I'm going to play with a little light as if there's a sun glare here. So let's add a little more exposure this way. Slightly warmer. Bring this up some more. As if she's looking down to sun glare. There we go. Let's bring up the exposure a little bit. Slowly down on the vibrance. I'm going to darken down this side a little. And draw your eye closer to her. Shadows a little bit more. Can also play with a brighter sunlight on this side too. A warmer brings out our eyes and fur. A little more I feel like this one is not successful, so yeah, that one doesn't have a star, so let's skip that one. Let's filter everything by star only, so I don't have to worry about the twenty-eight that I picked out earlier. It's a 
mean looking one. A little sparkle in her eye from the sun there. This one could benefit to be even closer for the crop. Let's go real close here. It's maybe a little bit more this way. You know, as if the sun is on this side, again, playing in the light color. It's still pretty dark, so let's go ahead and bring it up more. Some light warmth. I'm going to pop up the shadows some more. Maybe slightly too bright. Cool. All right, next one. Mm, this one's a harder one. Very bright against the snow. Let's go back to this. Hmm. Maybe too bright there. Next one. I can actually bring this down a little bit. little spot edit on this dirt on her nose. Get rid of that. There we go. Let's play with the brighter gradients here. That should be cool. All right. Here. Actually, I'm going to check this out again. I feel like that should be the new reference there. So it's up this just a little bit more. Right around there. Increase our saturation. Let's bring this a little bit higher. We're gonna try a closer crop. Yeah, that looks better. Next one. original. Just a little glare and color back there. Cropping closer. I'm going to move that dirt patch up top. It looks too weird. You can just change. Slight change there. Sitting like a fox. Let's 
So these are all pretty similar. I copy the settings. so low here. Let's try a vertical view of this. Yeah, don't really need a wide angle shot of that, so I'm going to keep this vertical view. Let's go back to seeing how this looks like. And a little bit of wider shot here. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's go back and do one more edit of what I want to keep. Now that I have some images that are color corrected, let's look through all this here. Let's keep this two, enhance two. Let's do two here, two there, love that one. This one's a little bit too similar to this one. And that one's also very similar to this one. Hmm. So I think I'm just gonna keep this one because this is similar to this one. Let's keep that one. I also like this angle because the background is a little bit different. Let's keep that. That one there. This one, this one, this one. Our hat. That one. And this one may be too similar to another one up there. Let's keep this one. This one, this one looks a little bit dark. There we go. That one, that one. This one, I'm gonna keep this one, and this one. So now I'm gonna kind of keep them by twos, go up to two, and I am down to 23. So I had 102 earlier, now I'm down to 23. Let's go ahead and look at all these together. See what we think as a whole. I do like the color palette. It does work out pretty well. Her orange fur is just really, really strong. This one may be a little bit too saturated. Let's bring down the vibrance just a little bit. We have exposure to there's this one. We need to see how enhanced details looks for this one. It does smooth out a little bit. There's a slight color shift from grayer to more teal. But it does smooth out a lot of her eyelashes. It's introducing a little bit too much teal, but let's see how this looks compared. So we've got the enhanced version here. Here's the reg regular version. Enhanced. Regular. Very subtle.
Let's do x, y. Especially down with the whiskers here, it looks like it's a lot smoother compared to the more jaggedy edges of the original. You can see it's a little more smooth on this end. Just slightly, but it's very small details and sometimes that matters. So let's go back here. Let's put this one as a one. And let's keep the enhanced version. Go back to rated. We were down to 29 with one star, and now it's down to two. All right, the three yellow ones are the enhanced versions. So I think I'm going to keep this for the final output, 23. On the second thought, maybe another round of editing. Got this one, this one, this one. Then I'm going to demote this down to one. So we have so many of those. Let's see here. All right, I think 22 then. 22 is the magic number. Yeah, let's keep that. All right, time for a final output. Um, what I'm going to do is select all, control A, right click, or you can do export button down here, export, export out here. You should do the specific folder. Um, I'm going to choose folder in the same catalog. I'm going to keep the catalog, the raw files, and the JPEGs all together. This is the JPEG folder here. Select that. And I usually do two outputs. One is the full res, and the other one is a smaller 2K lower res version, um, just for preview and for web. So let's do put in subfolder there. It'll rename everything, custom text, um, file name, and then also underscore 2048x, do a lowercase, JPEG quality 90, that's cool. I love the color space Adobe RGB because it keeps all a lot of more saturation. Um, sRGB is also good, um, but I feel the color display for Adobe RGB looks better. Resize photo to fit width and height, 2048 is good. Sharpening, screen, usually do high for output um, at the smaller lower res. Include all metadata, that's fine. I really don't care where people find where my stuff is. Remove location for privacy, remove person info if you want. And that's it, so let's do an export there. And then I'm gonna do right click again export out, this time full res. So I'm going to uncheck the put in subfolder, uncheck rename to, go back down to JPEG, uncheck resize, screen, change this to standard for full res. You don't want to mess with the full res too much. And let this go. So now we have two operations in progress. First one just finished, and now it's going to do the full res one and Got the 22 files right there. And now let it do its thing. All right, now that it's done, you can just go into your Windows Explorer and check out the files from there. I'm gonna open up Windows Explorer, go into the path of the catalog. So I've got all my JPEG outputs here. So I've got the full res, then I've also got the 2048 pixel more versions. 
Let's go in here first and look at this. Let's do a quick scroll through. And they look good. Let's check out the full res. Enhance. Yep, that looks good. All right. I hope you enjoyed my workflow of Lightroom, and I hope that helps speeds up your workflow as well for Lightroom. Thank you for watching.